We all saw you drive the uh, 2019 Mercedes at Silverstone. That must have been an absolutely incredible experience. I mean, as I said, that that Lotus that I or the, yeah the Lotus that I mentioned to you was the, the latest F1 car that I've driven. So it's you know another six or seven years on from that. Um, how big was the difference? Obviously, the the cars have have moved on in terms of downforce and, and mechanical grip. But in terms of the systems and the kind of suspension, I know they've got some fairly trick suspension um, nowadays. How, how did all of that feel? Uh, it's an ex- it was an extraordinary car, absolutely extraordinary. Um, you know, the previous car I drove in was the 2017 Williams, which was, you know, a decent car. They finished fifth in the World Championship that year, had a you know a couple of podiums. So it was a, the 2017 Williams was a decent car and was a hybrid, of course. Um, but the, the the Merc was just on another planet, you know. There's, it's just impossible to fault it. Really, it's just everything. It, 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 in some ways, though, I came away from that thinking, my God, that is by far the best car I've ever ever driven by a long, long way. Which is, I guess, logical because at that time it was the most the current car. car. I mean, I yeah. you know, I I, I drove the car on a Thursday and on the Friday it left to go to Suzuka for Lewis to drive it the following weekend so you know it, oh, it was the car yeah yeah it, it was his his <laughs> wow. race chassis for the last few races so yeah okay um you know and it won obviously won the championship so but I also came away from it thinking it's a little bit too easy for what yeah. F1 I believe should oh. be when it, when you look at it at a macro level and, and again I accept yeah. I was driving the best car on the grid, and if you drove something further down, it's probably not as easy. But I remember driving the 2004 Williams, um, the Montoya car the, with the BMW yep. engine, and to me, that is still the peak of Formula One performance. You know, 605 kilos as opposed to 745, um, which is a huge amount of weight. You know, that's six, seven seconds of lap time just can in you, weight. Can you feel it? Oh, absolutely. You know, the, the modern F1 cars. They're closer to a sports car in terms yeah. of the weight than they are, you know, compared to what they used to be. And, you know, the, the 2004 cars, 20,000 RPM, V10s, they were still punching out. The, you know, the BMW guys who came that day when we ran the car at Silverstone, they had all the dyno sheets and in true German fashion. They had every, <laughs> uh, they had a huge folder for that particular engine. And they went, yeah, this engine in 2004 was, you know, 956 horsepower on the dyno. And you just go, that's not far away from what the current car is putting out. Yeah. Um, but 140 kilos lighter which is massive, you know? So yeah. uh, it, it it was such a brutal attack on my senses. It was just like, what is going on? You know, it, it, you, you felt like it was an Everything. awe. Everything. Yeah. You just felt like it was an awe-inspiring experience. And it just, you know, it, it, it gave you such a jolt at every input and every everything you did. Whereas the 2019 car, it just... It just went, you know, if I wanted to turn and go here, you just turn a bit more and it just went. And it was just, it was almost too good, I think. Um, yes. And you can understand why drivers can get out of F2, get into F1 and be on the pace relatively quickly. Whereas I think in that era, I, I read, you know, a comment from Alonso last week as well, saying the same thing, you know, that era of 2000. Three, four, five—you know—he believed yeah. was the peak of, of F1 performance, and I fully agree. I think they were so difficult, but then it separated yeah. the drivers much more. I 100% agree. I think you know you shouldn't be able to get in an F1 car and it not scare you the first couple of times that you that, that you drive it. Yeah. Um, and you know, I don't know because I've not driven these these latest generation cars, but they do look like the. I, I, when you say it's easy, Karen, to to drive, or you know, easier to drive, let's not, you know, they're still yeah. very fast. Um, is it is is it the feeling that they give you? Are they really supple? Is the window driving it on the limit bigger? It, I like, the, is that why they look so refined when they're when they're turning the cars into it, the corner and everything's just perfect? It's just downfall, Scott. You know, the cars are they are so big now. The the footprint of the tire is so big. And the, the square area of the floor and the wings and the bodywork is so big, and you know the, the aero level is so refined. 
just the level of downforce they're putting out is extraordinary. But it's it's too much, you know, and it's it's been to the detriment of racing, which is why I really hope in 22, mm. the step they're talking about taking off all this downforce is going to work because, you know, the, the, the cars have just got way, way too much grip. When you watch the onboard, you know, you watch an onboard of Michael Schumacher or Alonso or Kimi from 2003, Ford, um, and... You, even Jensen, I think there's a there's an onboard from Imola, Jensen's pole lap in 2004, and Jensen is the smoothest driver since Alain Prost that you can watch. And you go and you watch it, and you go, "Wow, he is he is on it! Like, it looks like an accident waiting to happen at every corner. Um, it's just brilliant to watch, and and you feel this buzz watching it. Whereas you watch a Lewis lap from now, and it's extraordinary. I mean, the guy is. Is unbelievably good and unbelievably talented, but it doesn't give you that same buzz in your stomach where you think, "God, he's about to have an accident here." It just—it looks like it's on rails. The whole thing just—it's on rails. And I think yeah. that you know we need to go back to that a little bit more of having the cars just just a bit edgier. 